Humanity's initial target in the solar system was Venus, which was reached when it was eventually able to do so. It was the first planet astronomers successfully contacted after leaving Earth and the first planet that humanity crash-landed on. Research showed that Venus and Earth are more like identical twins. They have the exact dimensions, mass and gravitational pull. They are both in the habitable zone of our star. So far, no other pairs of neighboring planets in the cosmos are so similar to Earth. Yet, at some point in cosmic time, Earth transformed into a paradise for life as we know it. At the same time, Venus devolved into a fiery inferno. However, NASA has made new discoveries and revealed their plans to colonize Venus. Stay tuned to find out what changed along the line and why. As a planet, Venus became a unifying factor for world science in the 18th century. Former NASA head scientist Ellen Stoffen claims that studying exoplanets incorporates Venus into NASA's life-oriented goal. Venus has something incredibly essential to teach us about why the Earth is livable and why Venus is not, says one astronomer who studies extrasolar planets. At the beginning of Venus's history, she says, the ocean covered the Earth. Has life progressed throughout that time? We need to find answers to this question. Earth has been suitable for life for around 3.9 billion of those years. About 500 million years of Mars's history may have been livable. Today, Europa might have inhabitants, according to Stoffen. This is the issue we're really grappling with today. It's not enough to ask whether you're a potentially livable planet. We also need to know how long that era of habitability lasted. Did it seem like life finally took hold? How long did it last? A close look at Venus sheds light on these issues. Why has NASA stopped exploring Venus when there is so much to learn on such a nearby planet? To start, there just needs to be more money to go around. Only a tiny percentage of NASA's half of the 1% budget is allocated to planetary research. Back then, NASA couldn't go on another mission that would cost several billion dollars. As a result, the Venusian Society has zeroed down on $450 million in Discovery class tasks. They had a favorable advantage in the most recent round of Discovery selection procedure. Many ideas were considered, but only five made the cut. Two were Venus exploration missions. It appeared that humanity was finally going to be able to get it back to Venus when NASA announced it would be funding two Discovery missions. It was shocking when NASA revealed that it would send two missions to asteroids, but none to Venus. Despite calling the asteroid expeditions incredible and praising the superb principal investigators leading them, Stoffen, a Venus scientist, admits that she was really startled by the outcomes. Going ahead, she was concerned that NASA would have no one left with experience in Venus missions and the world will have no one who has ever operated on the surface of Venus. Her major worry was that the knowledge was lost even though it was still available. Without human expeditions to Venus, the planet will disappear forever, which will be a significant loss for humanity. Carbon dioxide is essential to creating Venus's harsh climate. However, this is only one point on a spectrum describing the possible impacts of CO2 on planetary climates. There is no danger of Earth becoming like Venus. Still, there are important lessons to be learned from Venus's experience with climate change that may be applied here. Despite being far from the Sun than Mercury, its surface temperature of 850 degrees Fahrenheit makes it, in fact, the hottest planet in the solar system. A lead chunk would melt on Venus's surface in the same manner as the ice melts on Earth. Soon after NASA announced Da Vinci Plus and Veritas, Chinese officials said they were thinking about sending a mission to Venus. Phosphine gas, a chemical sign of life, was recently found in the clouds of Venus. This could help solve a mystery about life on other planets. But the missions planned for Venus are far from making it habitable and moving people there. Alex Howe, an astronomer at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, recently wrote a paper about how people could build what he dubbed cloud cities 
and change the climate of Venus. The article says that in 200 years, Venus could support life if it had all of Earth's resources. The plan starts with covering Venus with 72 trillion huge connected patches about 30 miles above the surface. This shell will vacuum seal what's below it and change the chemistry of the air above it to make it breathable. Howe talked about how most people thought Mars would be a better place for humans to live than Venus. Venus also has some advantages over Mars for colonization because its surface gravity is close to that of Earth and its atmosphere is thick enough to protect against cosmic rays, he wrote. Howe talked about how crazy the idea was and noted that he just wanted to show that changing Venus's landscape is more accessible than people might think. Venus has always been a hot planet, not just because of its surface is it so hot. A new way to get water to the Earth would be to take ice from nearby moons and move them toward Venus. Here's the thing, Howe's paper has not been peer-reviewed, but experts think it is very likely NASA said they will send two probes across space to test long-held ideas about the planet next door. Let's put it this way, extending the cloud city idea to cloud continents, constructing a complete artificial surface floating in the upper atmosphere, is how Howe envisions taming Venus's hostile climate. That, according to Howe, might be done significantly more effectively than previous suggested approaches for terraforming Venus's surface. The cloud continents imagined by Howe would extend 30 miles above Earth's surface. However, Howe conceded that a surface made as a single piece will not be able to withstand these wind forces over thousands. He was confident that success could be achieved by using large interlocking hexagonal tiles a few tens of meters thick, with the joints between them providing the slack to resist the wind forces. NASA's unwavering commitment to the search for signs of extraterrestrial life is the third and arguably most devastating factor working against Venus's exploration. The agency can't resist the allure of whether or not we are alone in the universe. NASA has recently focused on small bodies because of their direct relevance to the question of life beyond planets and moons. Asteroids and comets have been speculated to have brought water to Earth and the amino acids and their precursors which are necessary for life. As a result, poor Venus, with its relentless heat, is out in the cold. There is almost certainly no life on its surface and only a remote possibility that bacteria could exist in its clouds. Do you see NASA colonizing Venus eventually? Share your thoughts in the comments section. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If yes, we're sure you would like this next video here. Thanks for watching.